Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at the techstop.net. I'm your host, Robert Balasser of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. And unless I'm mistaken, it's time to get your geek on. Now, you're probably wondering why I've got this big, ugly, desktop-looking thing in front of me. Well, it's not a desktop. If you look inside, you'll actually see that it's packed with drives, ten of them to be exact, set up in a RAID array. That's a redundant array of inexpensive or independent drives, depending on who you ask. This is a NAS box. That, that's right, NAS, Network Attached Storage. It's a dream of every Uber geek to have as much storage available instantly, and that's what a NAS does. This connects to the network and allows me to have access to two terabytes of data. More than that, it puts it into a RAID array. Now, if you want to know what a RAID array is, you could always Google RAID to find out the different levels, 0, 1, 5, 10, etc., etc. But suffice to say that this is a fantastic machine. But there are some disadvantages. First, to build something like this, you kind of have to be a geek. You have to know either Linux or Windows and how to set up RAID arrays. It's, it's not the simplest thing. It's not hard, but if you make a mistake, you could lose a lot of data that you can't replace. Secondly, a box like this actually uses up quite a bit of power. Even though I've stripped it down so that it just supports the drives and the hardware necessary to run the software for the RAID array, I'm still pulling about 200 watts. That's not really PC in today's age of uh, the eco-friendly geek. So, if you can't make one of these, what's the solution? The solution is this. Inference NV+. Plus. This is an all-in-one RAID array. Now, as you can see, it's about the size of an odd-shaped shoebox or a bread box, and yet this small package contains all the electronics, the drives, the, uh, the memory, the, the network interface that you need to have a high-performance RAID array. In fact, right now, as you can see, it's powered up and connected. All the videos behind me, the on both screens and up top, are actually running off of this drive right now, off of this box. On the bottom, although you can't see it in this picture, uh, you'll see it now, is actually a little LCD screen. At first I thought that this was a, a gimmick, just something to distinguish this from the NV. Uh, but what I quickly found out is that it's incredibly useful. Most of the boxes this size and in this class require you to run some sort of setup software or have a proprietary setup program in order to be able to access the drive when you first plug it into your network. This LCD screen allows you to have the box receive a DHCP uh, request, in other words, to receive an IP address automatically, and then it displays it on the LCD screen. So instantly, the moment you plug it in, you know exactly how the drive is doing, you know exactly how the array is doing, you know exactly what your IP address is, in, is and if you're running a standard Windows or Mac client, you can go ahead and connect really quickly. Feature-wise, the NV Plus is packed. It has a processor that Infant had specifically designed to handle the RAID functions, which means you get fantastic performance. It also has gigabit ethernet, which is a distinguishing factor among uh, many of the devices in this class, with jumbo frame support. Translation, you get maximum performance over your network. It also has these four hot swappable SATA caddies, which means that you can pull them out and replace them with any drive that's listed on inference compatibility index, just to make sure that the drives are actually hot swap compatible. It's got a, a compact size, uses a minimal amount of power. We'll actually have a picture here that shows you exactly how, how little power it uses at full, pow at, at full uh, access. It also has compatibility with DVD players, network DVD players, uh, UPnP devices, streaming AV devices. That means that unlike a lot of other NASs, network attached storage boxes, that require you to use some sort of server to pull the data off the NAS and then push it over to a networked DVD player or streaming device or an Xbox, this will actually load the software onto the, the box itself, into its OS, so that you can stream directly from here to the device that you have plugged into your theater. It's actually very, very handy. It's quiet, it's compact, it only has one fan in the back plus the spinning hard drives. But most importantly, it supports a wide, wide range of protocols, everything from uh, network file sharing, SMB, to the Apple share, and uh, peculiar protocols that you find on Linux and Unix. 
Another good feature about this box is this, the little backup button. Uh, it allows you to program it so that you can have a USB drive plugged into the front USB port. And when you press this button, it will back up the contents of the RAID to that USB drive, or just the parts that you say you want to back up. RAID-wise, this supports 0, 1, 5, and X-RAID. X-RAID is actually incredibly, incredibly important. It's designed to allow you to keep access to your RAID array and dynamically size it. Right now, like I said, we've got the videos running off of uh, this RAID box. These videos up in the corner, off to the sides, are being accessed directly off of this box. Because I'm using X-RAID, I can now do this. I've just ejected drive number four, and as you can see, the LCD has woken up. It's told me that uh, I'm, I've lost the drive. The uh, LED is blinking, telling me that I've got a problem. And yet, behind me, the video stays on. This excellent implementation of X-RAID allows the box to dynamically resize the size of the RAID array without losing connectivity. This isn't the first NAS to have USB ports so you can expand your storage, but this is the first one that I've tested that has worked with pretty much every USB hub that uh, I have in my inventory. A lot of these devices will only work if you plug the USB device directly into the box or if you buy a special hub. This has support for every single hub from 1.1 to 2.0 and every single device, every single flash media USB hard drive that I've plugged in here. I've been able to have the box access immediately, in case you can't see here, but the tough drive is being accessed by this, and it immediately gets put up on the share, which means that this is not just a standalone NAS box, but you can continue to expand it using several hubs, using external USB drives, flash drives, and the like. It also allows you to hook up USB printers and scanners. I was able to hook up both of my Dell printers and, and uh, HP scanners to this and access it via the, uh, the virtual interface. A few words on installation. This had one of the snappiest interfaces that uh, I've seen as of late. Not only did it respond quickly, again because of the dedicated processor, but everything was intuitive. Uh, when you wanted to go to security, you know exactly where the security settings were. When you wanted to set permissions, you knew where those were. When you wanted to set the USB backup parameters, you knew exactly where those were. Not only that, but this uh, uh, interface interfaces so well with Active Directory permissions that if you already have a domain in your network, uh, this will fit right in. What are my final thoughts? Well, quite simply, after having played with this box for about two months, there is no other box in its class and price range that I would rather have in my network. We've tested NASs from its competing manufacturers, and none of them came even close to the NV Plus in terms of performance, responsiveness, robustness, reliability. If you're looking for a lot of storage, and not just a lot of storage, but a lot of storage that stays protected and safe and secure, and it gives you options for expandability of drives or expandability of USB ports, will give you the performance that you want to be able to access your data at all times, then there really is no other choice than the Infrared NV+. Check it out at uh, our show notes. If you want to find out more, you can read the full article on the NV+, by going to www.thetechstop.net, clicking on Gadget, and clicking on Show Notes. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. I'm Robert Ballaser at Gadget at the techstop.net, thanking you for coming to watch. And remember, there's no Uber Geek without you.